As winter approaches, male black bears can consume 10,000 to 12,000 calories in one day. To reach this goal, black bears must find the very best sources of nutrients while outputting the least amount of energy. To discover which wild edibles are most nutrient rich and plentiful, I'm going to pick the brain of local foraging expert, Alan Muscat. Alan has spent years exploring the woods of the Blue Ridge Mountains and can hopefully show me how to gather enough food to sustain myself for three days in the wild. A lot of the plants in this area I'm unfamiliar with. Has there been a lot growing right now or is it pretty slim pickings? I mean, fall's kind of a hard foraging time, I feel like. And not always. I mean, fall can be great, but we've had a drought, like, huge. Uh, it's very ironic that it's rained in just the past few days because it's my hardest year yet, 20 years. Really? Yeah. Do you think right now I could find enough to sustain myself, live off the fat, or would it be pretty meager? No, obviously, normally you can, because a bear does it, yeah. you know? And um, if it's not literally fat from animals, like, then it's nuts, you yeah. know? Or you put on carbs and, you, you know, you make the fat. Right. And um, there's a lot of mushrooms in the fall. It's the number one time. Is there a, a standard with mushrooms as far as base things that you don't want to go for? Not really. Like, most people will be like, okay, if it's on a tree, if it's one of these things, you're okay. Yeah. And then I learned last year there's a deadly one. Really? Yeah. With pores, on trees, deadly. This, too. You, this is, quote, edible, but people get sick all the time because they don't cook it enough. And that's true for any mushroom. If I say edible, that, that's a basic rule for you. Like, it means cooked. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You don't want to be eating the mushrooms raw. I mean, the bear's flexible because it already knows a million things. Yeah. But if I were you just starting out, I'd focus. And I'm going to stick to what's most common. Yeah. So maybe, you know, you eat a lot of one thing, but um, that's going to be your safest bet. Right. With foraging basket in hand, Alan and I are headed into the woods to see if we can gather up a decent lunch. I'm used to looking for deer and moving animals, <laughs> moving food. Yeah, it's just hunting that it doesn't run away. Oh, here we go. Check this, check this one out. But taste it. That'd be the way to... Taste the leaves? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's no way to tell. Sour. Sour. Like an apple. Yeah. It's called sour wood. It's, that's what Sour and for. bitter. This is. Yeah. If you need to munch on something in the middle of the day, this could Great be apple. it. Yeah. Yeah, someone said it would like quench your thirst. Like if you're yeah. really thirsty. Put in our basket. Let's keep going. As we head further into the woods, we encounter a couple different mushrooms, including some puffballs and a giant mataki. This is probably the best thing we could find. This is the one that's known as hen, hen of the woods? Uh, yeah, hen of the woods. As far as mushrooms go, they don't have a lot of caloric value, but they do have nutritional value, is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, vitamins, minerals, even protein. Like really? Sometimes as much as meat or milk. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, this is a real, a real catch. Before we head back, Alan wants to show me a couple yeah. of plants that would make a great salad for a meal. Oh, and here's another one that's fun. It it's kind of looks like a rugby one. Yeah. Really. But taste it. It's got like a pine uh -huh. style flavor. It's daisy, like the flowers. Here's something you asked me about earlier. Oh, yeah, sorrel? Mm-hmm. The sorrel is nice. It's got like that lemony flavor. Yeah. Now, this is a nice surprise. Taste it. It's hot. Yeah, yeah. This is a wild arugula. Oh, it is? It's a wild mustard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the bear, I'll need to be smart in my foraging and gain enough energy from the food I find to replace the energy it took to find it. Alan and I are heading back to prepare our lunch, and I've worked up quite an appetite. Much like the black bear, humans are also selective eaters. Since I'm not familiar with the Blue Ridge Mountains, I spent an afternoon with forager Alan Muscat gathering mushrooms and greens local to the area. Alan's going to prepare us a meal with the day's haul, including some of his own finds. This is about as gourmet as a foraging meal can get, so I'm looking forward to it. The thing I love about this is whether it's gathering food or hunting, to me, it's like things you work for. It just tastes so much better. It's like it means something every time you take a bite, every time you eat it, and it just tastes
tastes so much better knowing where it came from. And it's just out here. Yeah, it's, I call it the Garden of Eden, really, to people. If I can eat like this every night, I'll be a happy camper. <laughs> I can get fat eating like this. Uh -huh. This is a meal fit for a bear right here. Yeah. It's easy to see how black bears spend most of their day foraging. It takes a lot of time and energy to find even a meager source of food. I'll admit, I'm a little nervous about finding enough food to sustain myself in the woods for three days after just one lesson, but I'm excited to start trying.